What's up guys? So what I want to cover in this video are Nordic curls. And Nordic curls are hands down my favorite posterior chain body weight exercise. They may be my, post my favorite posterior chain exercise in general just because of how difficult they are. And a lot of times people make the mistake of thinking the Nordic curl is the same thing as a glute ham raise, but really they're two completely different exercises. And a lot of the times people that can do the full version of the glute ham raise can barely do the first version of the Nordic curl. And if you check out the link in the bio, I wrote a article or a blog post a little while back kind of explaining a little bit on why the Nordic curl is so much more difficult than the glute ham raise. So I'd love if you guys check it out. So what the full version of the Nordic curl is gonna be, for the few people that can actually do it, there's gonna be a straight line from the knees to the hips to the shoulder. So you're really not breaking at your torso at all. And it's just a straight line as you lower your chest to the floor and then come back up. The first three versions we're gonna cover are gonna start by initiating or breaking at the hip like a hip hinge. Version one, we're just gonna bring our nose to the mat here. That's not gonna alter the femur angle that much but athletes are still gonna find this variation very difficult, causing cramping in the hamstrings, calves, and even the bottom of the feet. For version three here, we're gonna to aim to bring our chest to the floor. This is gonna cause our femur angle to be roughly at 45 degrees. Once you become strong enough to perform the chest to the floor variation, you can start working on keeping the torso straight, breaking less at the hips, and eccentrics is a great place to start with this. This first option is definitely going to be a little unrealistic based upon the price and the size of the piece of equipment, but I want people to be aware of this. Rogue makes a bench that's basically specifically for Nordic curls. I've had the opportunity to use the bench before, and by far in terms of comfort on the knees, and kind of how securely my feet are anchored in for the Nordic curls, it's definitely the best option out there. This next option is maybe a little more realistic if you don't have $500 to spend on a Nordic curl bench. And all this is is a rogue split squat attachment. It screws into rogue monster rigs or squat stands or whatever the hell they are. And in terms of for what the price is, I believe it cost me about $100, it's the best option I found to anchor my feet in securely to perform the Nordic curls. And then from there, I just put my knees on a gymnastics mat or an ab mat, or I'll raise the attachment up and put my knees on a bench. All right, so option number two here, if you don't have the split squat leg piece, you can simply use an ab mat to give your knees a little cushion. And then what I'm gonna do is my knees are gonna go on the back of his feet. I'm gonna hold down his ankles. As he goes forward in the Nordic curl, I'm actually going to lean forward to support him. I don't know if Owen's going to be able to do this or if his hamstrings will cramp on him. Let's give it a try. Yep, his hamstrings just gave out on him. But that's your second option if you don't have a split squat stand, so you can do this with partners. Option three, if you can't get a friend to hold your feet down, what you'll do is, once again, ab mats, just cushion for her knees, um, and you can put your feet underneath a dumbbell rack to hold them in place. Ideally, what you want, kind of as a tip, I would use a yoga mat or some sort of mat to put between your ankles and the dumbbell rack just to add a little cushion. Then from there you can go through the different versions of the Nordic curl.